Hello everybody, my name is Sarah Jeffrey and I'm a recorder player. I specialise in contemporary music but of course I play early music as well. Something a bit different today, I have developed this coming video as part of an early music conference that I was invited to speak at. Obviously we can't be there in real life so I'm giving mine as a video contribution and you get to listen to it here as well. In this discussion about the division between modern and early instruments and their repertoire, I'd like to offer the point of view of the recorder. It's an ancient instrument, yet with a great deal of modern development, centuries of repertoire, yet its own contemporary language. And put simply, yes, we play modern music on early instruments, and vice versa. I hope to give you an insight into this vast topic in these few minutes. Context. Recorder-like instruments have been around for 40,000 years, but the recorder as we know it was a staple through the Baroque, Renaissance and medieval periods. Like many other period instruments, it fell out of popularity and then was revived again in the 20th century. And since the 1960s, there have been more compositions written specifically for the recorder than in all the centuries before. And this was largely due to pioneering figures like Franz Bruchen, Walter von Hauer, who went out, met composers and made this happen. But this instrument that was revived in the 20th century is in fact the Baroque recorder. The normal recorder as we know it is a standardization of the Baroque instrument. By this I mean 442 hertz, roughly equal temperament, but recorder makers today are largely copying historical models. Not always, and I'll get to that later. These Baroque recorders are fantastic for contemporary music because they're so flexible in terms of the pitch, sound colours, and they react very quickly. Do we see other historical models than the Baroque recorder? Certainly. The recorder evolved a great deal throughout history and now we see medieval, renaissance, early Baroque models varying across time and geography. And you do see people playing modern music on these historical models. And while there are modern pieces written for these more unusual types of recorder, there aren't as many. Why? It's not because of their sound possibilities, these are fantastic. A big part of it is to do with availability. These historical models are handmade, not mass produced. So it may depend on the instruments that this recorder player possesses. Because here's the thing, pieces for the recorder don't get composed on their own. A big part of it is recorder players taking the initiative, going to collaborate with composers to create new repertoire. Recorder players tend to be very proactive in this because we know that a straightforward career path for us does not exist. We have to initiate everything ourselves. But while we talk about instruments, are there modern recorders being developed? Absolutely, we are seeing everything from the giant square bass pet sword recorders with their keys and their percussive qualities, to the Mullenhauer modern editions, their different bore gives it different harmonics and a wider range. There are many others that I don't possess, so I can't show you, but we also augment the recorder with live electronics. What do these new recorders offer? Options. They're not there to replace the Baroque or traditional recorder. They are there to expand our sound palette and to give us more possibilities. And yes, before you ask, we do play early music on these modern recorders too. this fit into historical performance practice? We are seeing the whole spectrum of faithfully recreating historical performances on period instruments, developing a new language with modern instruments, and every combination of crossover in between. Every player, every composer approaches it in a different way, and in my personal opinion, 
there is space for everyone. I think as musicians it's vitally important we are aware of our history, aware of the context and can take that into account if need be, but that we're not afraid to experiment. What I love about early music and contemporary music is that both styles require a similar mindset. You're exploring sound as the core and you have the potential to be hugely creative. One difference is that in early music you are investigating a performance practice that did exist and in contemporary music that's something more developing in real time but with both you have the potential to create your own interpretation. And as a recorder player I see so much potential and joy in the diversity of the instruments we have available, the flexibility of the recorder and the curious open-minded approach I see amongst so many of my colleagues. This was a very brief introduction and although I can't give you fixed conclusions, I hope this has given you some interesting starting points to think about and an insight into the recorder landscape. This short talk was brought to you by the Rima Early Music Summit that is coming up next weekend. You can still register to participate online until the 16th, so I strongly recommend you go and do that. My video that you saw will be shown on Saturday the 21st as part of the Bach on piano? Do you need a permit? Discussion about the crossover between early and modern music and instruments. Um, the rest of the programme looks absolutely fantastic. Speakers from the early music world all over Europe, concerts, uh, discussions, you can take part. It's all online, so I'll put the links in the description. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here. Over here is the Team Recorder web shop where you can order my album. And up here is my discussion on the difference between German, French and Italian Baroque. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!